Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi my name is Ava and I'm a mortgage power planner. Now today's video is very specific as it won't apply to everybody but I do feel like it's very important to discuss this topic as I know that it can help a lot of people out there. So today we're discussing the right to buy, how it works, what the discount is, how you go about it and most importantly what are the lenders saying about it? What are the lending criteria around it. If this is something that affects you, if you currently live in a council house, keep watching as this will explain everything you need to know. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. But just before we jump into the video, if you could hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, that would help me out so much. So thank you in advance. Right, let's jump right in. Right guys, so let's actually start with explaining what the right to buy scheme is. So basically, if you are currently renting out a house from the likes of the council, housing association, or any other public sector company, you may be eligible to buy that house off them. And that scheme is called right to buy. Now, the beauty of this scheme is that it offers you a discount for actually purchasing that property, which I'll go on to in a minute. So as with anything of this nature, there are eligibility criteria that you need to meet in order to be able to apply for this scheme. I've briefly discussed one of them before and that's the fact that you actually have to be living in a council house. But other than that, this has to be your main home. You also must be self-contained, so not a house of multiple occupation. You must be what's called a secure tenant, which basically means you've got lifetime tenancy. So if you're not sure whether this applies to you, contact either the council or the housing association that you're renting the house from and they'll be able to tell you what your tenancy type is. And you have to have lived in that house for at least three years. Now the three years doesn't have to be consecutive. So let's say you lived in a council house for two years, then moved into privately rented accommodation for a year, but then moved back into a council house and you've lived there another year, you'll be able to apply for that. But if you want to check whether you're definitely eligible for this scheme, the government website has a calculator which can tell you that. So I'll link it down below for you so you can have a look at that. So what's the maximum discount that you can actually get on this scheme? So if you live in a house, the initial discount is 35% if you've lived in that house between three to five years. After the five years, the discount actually increases by 1% for every year that you've lived in that house for, up to a maximum of 70% or 84,600 across England, except London where it's slightly higher at £112,800. Now bear in mind that those figures do actually increase in line with the consumer price index every year to make sure the rise in line with inflation and of course the rise in house prices due to inflation. Now things are slightly different if you live in a flat. So with a flat you actually get a 50% discount if you've lived in it for three to five years and then it goes up by 2% after the five years for every single year that you've lived in that flat for. But once again it's still capped at 70% and the values are exactly the same. So 84,600 for England and 112,800 for London. So you might be wondering how the discount is actually calculated based on what I've just told you. So there are basically three things that are taken into consideration when actually calculating the discount. So number one is how long you've actually lived in the property for. So as I said before, you must have lived in the property for at least three years. It of course depends on whether you're living in a flat or a house. As I've mentioned before, the discount is slightly different based on what type of property you're living in. And of course, the value of your home. As remember, the discount is actually capped at either 70% of the value of the property or 84,600 whichever is lower. Right, so let's get into the juicy part and that's how much can you actually borrow when it comes to the right to buy. <music> 
Now, I've done some research on various lenders to see how the lending criteria differs because as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, every lender has different lending criteria. Yes, they might be similar in certain cases, but they all assess things differently. They all have different procedures and, and different criteria that they stick to. So, what I found was that some lenders were willing to lend up to 100% of the discounted value, as well as lending you some more towards any home improvements, which is brilliant. Now, the reason that they're actually able to do that is all to do with the loan to value because they're actually basing the loan to value on the open market value of the property. So not the price that you're paying, because remember, you're paying the discounted price. It's the actual price of the property if a private buyer was to buy it. So in effect, a lot of lenders actually cap the loan to value at 80 to 90%. Whereas if you're buying it discounted, the kind of minimum discount that you can get is 35% which naturally means the loan to value will be 65% on the property that you're buying from the council. So let's put this into some sort of context with an example because I know just talking about it can be very confusing. So if we take a property valued at £100,000 as an example just to make it nice and easy round numbers you know we like easy. So if the council offers you a 35% discount that's £35,000 pounds right so the amount that you'll need to borrow from the bank is sixty five thousand pounds assuming you have zero deposit saved up so that sixty five thousand actually represents sixty five percent loan to value from a bank's point of view because they're still basing that loan to value on the market value of the house so the hundred thousand not the sixty five that you're actually paying for it does that make sense are you, are you following I hope you are so as I mentioned before certain lenders will actually allow you to borrow up to 90% loan to value. So if you're buying the house for £65,000, this means that you could potentially borrow up to £90,000. So that extra money is to be used for the likes of your home improvements. Now, some lenders will require you to put down a deposit. So just bear that in mind as not all of them will lend 100% of what you need. So it's always worth speaking to an experienced mortgage advisor, especially one that has dealt with these type of schemes or you know researched them extensively so you know feel free to contact me if you need any help put sales pitch over let's get back into it the one thing that you do need to bear in mind with all of this is that it is subject to normal affordability criteria so your income and expenditure has to add up in order for you to be able to afford this house now a lot of lenders won't accept benefit payments as they're under the impression that those will not continue once you buy the house so once again something to bear in mind as your income will need to stack up and once again speak to a mortgage advisor as they'll be able to actually tell you what the maximum amount is that you're able to borrow based on your income and expenditure and the best way to actually maximize how much you can borrow is to clear off any debt and I've got plenty of different videos about clearing off debt whether it's credit card debt whether it's any other debt really as I would definitely definitely encourage you to do so now finally I just want to to touch up on some things that you need to I guess watch out for because it might come back to bite you on the backside unfortunately. And the main thing here is the fact that if you sell this property within five years of purchasing it, you might have to pay back all or part of the discount that you received from the council. So basically, if you're going to use this scheme, do not sell the house for at least five years. And as I mentioned before, the affordability is crucial in this. Benefit payments aren't usually taken into account when assessing your income. So just bear that in mind and make sure that you have some sufficient income to be able to afford the mortgage on a monthly basis. So that is it for today's video guys. I hope you found it useful and you've learned something new. Now if this scheme does apply to you, if you are currently living in a council house, definitely look into it and check your eligibility as you might be able to buy your house and finally get onto the property ladder. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below as I do like to hear your thoughts and opinions. So with that being said, if you like this video, please give a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below as it really helps to support my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys back on Monday with a brand new video. Bye guys!